Here's problem 8.5. A 2 kilogram block situated on a frictionless incline is connected to a light spring, spring constant 100 newtons per meter, as shown. The block is released from rest when the spring is unstretched. The pulley is frictionless and has negligible mass. What is the speed of the block when it is reached or moved 0.2 meters down the plane? All right, so we have this block that's going to move 0.2 meters down this plane. Let's call that distance d. So it's actually a move from some point, let's call it a, to some point b. All right, when that happens, the uh, spring is also going to stretch. So the spring is going to stretch some distance x. And this x is actually going to be the same distance as d because everything's connected. So the spring is going to stretch a distance 0.2 meters. And that's going to be going from a point A to point B as well. All right. What we're really interested in terms of the mass is how, how much it changes in height. Our height is actually this distance as we're going, selecting our lowest height as our reference to be zero at point B, we're interested in height H, which is part of a triangle. If we look at that triangle, we can see that H should be equal to D times the sine of 37 degrees. That's going to be equal to 0 0.2 times 3 fifths, or 0 0.12 meters. Okay, so that's our height at point A if we define our height at point B to be zero. All right, I think we're ready to write our one equation to rule them all. We have the kinetic energy at A plus potential energy at A plus any work done along the way. We'll equal our kinetic energy at B plus potential energy at B. In this case, we're starting from rest, so we have no kinetic energy at A. We are going to have kinetic energy at B. We want to find out how fast we're going when we're at point B. So we will have kinetic energy there. In terms of potential energy, um, we have an MGH at A. But uh, the spring is still unstretched at that point. So we don't have any spring energy at point A. And we don't have any work done along the way. Uh, gravity is accounted for by potential energy, so we don't have to worry about uh, gravity. We have our kinetic energy at B, one-half mass times velocity at B squared. And our potential energy at B, well, we, we don't have any gravitational potential energy at B, but we have stretched the spring by that point. So we'll have a one-half kx squared for that. So this is the way our equation looks right now. We want to solve this for the velocity at B. Alright, so I'm going to subtract a 1 half kx squared from both sides. So I now have 1 half mass velocity at B squared is equal to mg height at A minus 1 half kx squared. Alright, let's uh, multiply both sides by 2, divide by the mass, and take the square root. So our velocity at B is going to be 2 times all this mg height at A minus 1 half kx squared. Over the mass, all that square root. Alright, so let's put in our numbers. Our mass was uh, 2 kilograms. G is 9.8, H is one, uh, 0.12, minus 1 half times K, which is 100, X is 0.2 squared, all this over the mass, which is 2 kilograms, all this square root. 2 and 2 cancel here. And so let's figure that out. 
So I get the uh, square root of 0.352, which is equal to 0 0.593. So I have 0 0.593 meters per second is the velocity at point B. If I change that to centimeters per second, then that's approximately uh, 59.3 centimeters per second. So that is our velocity at point B, 0.593 meters per second.